Okay, I've been sent this by a friend and they are a little bit of an EV skeptic themselves. They know I'm a little bit more optimistic about the future with EVs and they know that I've got a lot more experience with the motor trade. They don't work in the motor trade themselves, but they know that my whole life I've grown up in the motor trade, my dad before me, his dad before him, and I've seen everything. I've worked in the main dealers, I've worked in independent network, I've worked for the the big uh nationwide motor factors chain and now I run my own small business so he sent me this video by this guy called Barry Crampton um, not someone that I've come across before but uh, clearly he's got plenty of followers and he's making quite a name for himself as someone who attacks EVs and his videos seem to be doing pretty well for himself so I'm just going to dig into his latest one which was the one that was sent to me EVs are 79% more likely to go wrong than a petrol or diesel. From what I'm seeing in the main dealership network and the independent uh, garage network is definitely not true. That doesn't seem to be borne out at all in my immediate sphere of uh, connections. But um, I just want to delve into the information that he's sharing and let's see if there's any val validity to this. There is a report out today and I will try and link it back to the report to, to give it some uh, credence. It's from Warranty Wise. Now, first of all, Warranty Wise. Warranty Wise have been around for over 20 years. Everyone in the business knows them, and most people perceive them as cowboys. They're there to sell extended warranties to quite often unsuspected pe unsuspecting people, and they sell them based on fear. They like to tell you that your car is terribly unreliable, so you need to buy our warranty because we'll cover you. I've also heard and seen, experienced friends and family and other people that I've known through the industry that they try to claim on warranty wise and warranty wise have got so many ways of small little T's and C's of sneaking their way out of paying warranties. So it's just uh, to say that warranty wise may not be the most credible source because their business model is about sowing the seeds of fear in you so that they can sell you a warranty. Okay, let's let's move on. What does this report actually say? EVs proven to encounter 79% more reliability issues compared to their petrol or diesel counterparts, according to Consumer Reports. Now, there is a little asterisk next to the Consumer Report, so I'll, I'll try and get back to that. 79% more reliability issues compared to their petrol or diesel counterparts. I want to get to that asterisk. What does that mean? Where is this evidence? Where have they got this data from? The one point that I will agree with Barry on is that the motor trade is full of Luddites who don't want to move on and they don't want to reskill and they don't want to learn about EVs and they don't want to embrace and adapt to the new technology. They just want to sit there with their carburetors and their points ignitions and sit in their comfort zone. And I, I understand that. But we are constantly pushing forward. People fought against fuel injection for decades. People fought against electronic ignition, fought against um, ECU controlling our airflow mixture, loads of things like that that people fought against. But we now know that they are more convenient, more reliable. And once we understand them, they're much easier to work on. So we need to stop sowing the seeds of fear, or uncertainty and doubt throughout the motor trade. We need to encourage and embrace it and, and, and be enthusiastic so that more people will train and will learn and there'll be more people to work on these EVs because we do need them. Don't think I'm stupid. You probably do, but don't. Because this warranty-wise, everybody has got an agenda. I don't have an agenda. I just want to sell cars. The warranty company. The warranty company sees that EVs are going to be the future. They want to get on board and they've brought this report out. Now, although it says... EVs proven to encounter 79% more reliability issues compared to their petrol or diesel counterparts, according to consumer reports. I take that with, I'm impartial, so I take it with a pinch of salt. I see somebody there trying to sell their products. We agree on that. We both see the motor trade in the same way. 
warranty wise are there to sell warranty so there's they found some sort of study they're citing some sort of study let's get into that barry we both see that warranty wise are just trying to sell their product i'm in a couple of forums i have my own forum on citroen amis i love the car i'm assuming what they do this this is how warranties work it's a profit center for the dealership they make money on warranties and they also you sell a warranty with a, a limited price or, or a, a limited payout, limited cover, and then when the customer comes in and says, right, Mr. Customer, this is our warranty. I can offer you an extended warranty for £350. That will cover all these parts. If you don't want to take that out, can you sign this to say that you've been offered it and you've refused it? it puts the shits up you. That's how they sell them. You end up giving the dealer profit. Okay, Barry. You're talking my language. You understand the sales tactics. You understand the upselling. You understand why they do it. And these warranties are not just profiteering by the warranty company, but also dealers up and down the country are also upselling people on these warranties to try and make a quick buck. You're admitting it, okay? So you're kind of undermining your own argument at the moment. But let's keep going in this video because we're not even halfway yet. One warranty company that I've never used is Warranty Wise. I'm not going to bore you anymore. I'm going to go down to the disclaimers. And here we have the one, two, three, and four asterisks. Finally, this is what we've been waiting for. Some sources. Excellent. So the first asterisk, the consumer report, EVs are less reliable. That was done... December 12, 2023, electric vehicles are less reliable than conventional cars by IER. Okay, he's just spending time just going through this thing. But let's talk a little bit about the IER. Who are they? So it's the Institute for Energy Research. Here we go. We have a quick look on Wikipedia. You can read. It's basically one of these think tank lobbyist groups, cloak and dagger behind the scenes. You know, here in the UK, we got Tufton Street. This seems like this is one of the American uh, uh, versions of it. Let's have a little look at their funding so that we can understand a little bit about their motivation. Wow, so Exxon Mobile have been funding them. And some other, I mean, if you want to have a look at some of, of the uh, background of some of these things, um, you'll, you'll see some uh, interesting, interesting things. They're basically being funded by oil companies and people who have vested interests in oil. So, of course, they want to sow the seeds of fear, uncertainty, doubt around EVs. I don't know why, Barry, you've spent this. We've we've had 23 minutes with you and you're only now just getting into the report. But do you know who this report is by? Just because somebody puts Institute in the name of uh, their report, it does not make them credible, not at all. And they clearly have an agenda. And yes, I have now paused the video and I have read this and it looks like something that AI has just written. It's absolute garbage and it also doesn't give the data and the statistics so yes we found this IER report that warranty wise and other sources are then using uh, other uh, outlets are, are sourcing this and using this to you know fear monger basically but this report doesn't tell us or show us any of the data. It just says the source is consumer reports. There's no asterisks. There's no site in anything here. You can go up and down. The only thing is see more articles by this export expert, which shows you that this so-called expert is publishing reports like this every single day for the month for the last couple of months. So I mean, take what you will from that. But earlier, Barry was saying maybe we should take some of this stuff with a pinch of salt. If it's uh, been published by the Institute for Energy Research, it, it should be less than a pinch of salt. Anyway, Barry, make your final, final closing arguments. Now, I'm going to put that down to them wanting to sell warranties. It's a scare tactic. Yes, I totally agree. 
that's exactly what's happening and you're feeding into that so Barry you're saying that you have no motivation you've got no vested interest so why are you propagating this why are you using this as clickbait why are you using it in your thumbnail when you 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 are pretty much debunking yourself and you're debunking the warranty wise claim and article but you're still agreeing with most of the stuff in there. I mean, like, pick a side. You just, I don't know if you're anti EV or if you're pro EV. I can't quite make up my mind. Perhaps that is designed to make EV people think twice. Perhaps it's wrong. I am impartial. But the headline is, as I'm going to put in my clickbait thumbnail, not my information, I'm just relaying it. And I'm relaying it with my thoughts. I don't trust anybody. Barry, you're on a public platform. You have a responsibility to fact check the things that you share, or at least do the smallest amount of research. There's a difference between disinformation and misinformation. And I would classify what the IER are doing as disinformation. It's got a motive it's funded by big oil and very wealthy individuals who have vested interests in oil but what you're doing is spreading misinformation because you are unwittingly propagating this and you should know better um because you're you you're acknowledging all of the tactics and you're understanding all of the principles but you're still continuing to share it so tell me again that you're impartial and tell me again that you have no motivation to discredit EVs because that's not what your actions are saying. Your words may be saying it, but your actions are saying something different. So pick a side. Thank you very much for the video, Barry. Uh, thank you for sharing this disinformation that has originally uh, started with the IER. It's then been propagated by Warranty Wise and companies that should know better. And to some people, the consumer is going to see a company like Warranty Wise and they're going to think that that's credible and they're going to think that that is credible information. So Warranty Wise should know better. Barry, you should know better. I'm asking you to do better and I hope that you take the time to watch this video and maybe consider the choices that you're making on the content that you're sharing and how truthful the information is. So Warranty Wise are citing a consumer report, which is not even UK based, it's not even got any data with it, but we can look at a consumer report from the UK published by Watcar. They do this every single year. I think consumer reports are absolutely rubbish because the people who have had problems are the ones who are going to contribute and are going to complain. But anyway, what can we do? This is the data we've got, 21,732 respondents. And we can look at the exact percentage of the reliability rating and the issues that were contained within. And um, there can be, you can see what was covered under warranty, what wasn't covered under warranty. And as you can see, there's a lot of very common uh, cars. Oh, there's my MG5. Reliability rating 96%. I mean, if we want to look at something like um, if we move down to the least reliable petrol and diesel cars, we can see that the Ford Cougar, 76%, Skoda Karok, 76%, BMW 3 Series, very popular common car on the road, only 78% reliable, but people aren't complaining about that, so why is this such an issue? Range Rover Evoque, I'm surprised that it scores 80% because that is well known as being unreliable. Even cars that are known for being relatively reliable, like a Skoda Superb, 84%. So if we compare that to the few EVs that I've just looked at, even the Cupra Board, 95.6, Kia Nero EV, 94.6, ID3, 94.3, Tesla Model 3, 93.9%. .9%. We can see that this consumer report shows us that EVs are incredibly reliable and incredibly consistent between various makes and models. The same sort of thing we can look at petrols if you're anti-diesel see Jaguar E-Pace 72.7 75 for a BMW 4 Series Alfa Romeo 76.6 well done beating BMW at their own game 
beat it, the Italians beating the Germans. Anyway, I mean, you can look for data online and you can sow any kind of narrative you want by picking and choosing facts. All I'm going to do is put all the links in the description down here. You go and make up your own mind. You can read the IER so-called study. It's just absolute garbage. Have a look at the what car findings make what that of you make what you will of that take it with a pinch of salt thank you everyone for watching if you want to support the channel like comment subscribe over 90 percent of you never do any of those things we're going to get on a little bit of a mission to try and uncover the truth around these things and we are just looking for the sources. Cite your sources, Barry. There's no citation in the description of that video, and that is misleading. Okay, I need to sign off. No more ranting from me today. Farewell.